My t-shirt design made $24,387 in 30 days. My name is Shimmy Morris and today I want to walk you through exactly how I was able to create a design and make five figures on my first attempt and I want to share with you my secret formula. I know that sounds weird, but no, really, I want to share with you my secret formula on how I actually got sales with this design. I just want to add, this design has now been copied thousands of times, and whilst it's really annoying and it's upsetting, I kind of don't mind because I was still able to make quite a substantial amount of money with it. Step one, write down your passions. This may sound quite wishy-washy, but hear me out. In a way, this design was in the making for 15 years. Basically, I have a huge passion for cars. I've watched car programs my whole life, read car magazines, read books from famous car people. I've pretty much just immersed myself in the car world. So for step one, write down all of your passions and you don't have to have immersed yourself as much as I have in cars, but it really helps. The idea of doing something that you're already passionate about, well, it's just there to make your life far easier. When this idea came to me, it just seemed so obvious. Mixing one of my biggest passions with a huge trend, I knew the audience and I knew exactly what they would want. So it wasn't hard to design something and to market and to sell to them because I was one of them. Step two is creating the design. Usually I would say this isn't so important, but in this case, I wanted to make something instantly recognizable. I had to be really careful though because I didn't want to infringe on a copyright because I was dealing with famous car programs and magazines and car brands. A lot of that is copyright. You can't use most of it. So I had to kind of work out a way that I could use something recognizable that wouldn't get me in trouble. As Top Gear was my favorite show at the time, when you had the classic Richard Hammond, James May and Jeremy Clarkson on it, right? As that was my favorite and Father's Day was fast approaching, it just seemed like the obvious choice to mix the two. So I created a design that said Top Dad. I know, brilliant, absolutely genius. No, in all honesty, it, it, it was quite straightforward and obvious, but still, there was a lot of thought that went into this design and the idea behind the design. As well as Top Gear being my favorite show at the time, Top Gear was one of the most popular things on TV, which I feel really helped this design actually gain traction. The actual design doesn't need to be complicated despite what people say, it's more important that you create something that grabs their attention. When it comes to actually creating that design, I used a variety of tools. I started with Canva, and the reason I used Canva is because it was quick and it was easy and it had the font that I needed, which was Impact. Then I moved on to Photoshop. Now, by the way, I also used Canva to find the cog and other elements, but after I did all of that, I moved over to Photoshop to kind of move it a bit, to angle it, to put the cog in and do all of that. Now I know, I know Photoshop does cost and you might not have access to it. So if you don't have access to Photoshop, that's fine. You can use Photopia or GIMP that allow you to use all the same features as Photoshop, but for free. Step three, creating a simple mock-up. The next thing I did was create a really, really simple mock-up, and this was vital for the next step. There are many places to get mock-ups, free ones, paid ones, whatever. My go-to is Placeit. Now, Placeit does have a really cool free option. Personally, I like the paid options, so that's why I pay for Placeit. But like I said, there are many free options. And if you want the link down below, we'll get you 15% off a paid account if that's something you're interested in. For this specific design and this specific ad set, I didn't actually use any of the fancy, complicated Placeit mock-ups. I literally just used a plain t-shirt with the design on it 
and I plunked it on a red background with a green border. Step four, advertising it. Nowadays, I would say use social media as much as you can. Post 10 TikToks and 10 Reels every single day. Just post, post, post. But back then when I did this, short form content wasn't really a thing. So I relied on ads in order to actually gain traction, get views, and then get sales. And quite honestly, your success was down to how good you were at marketing. And during that period of time, that's when I really learned how to become an amazing, amazing marketer. And quite honestly, even though there's short form content these days, Ads still play a huge part of my success. I love ads and whether that's TikTok ads, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, I like to use a variety of different ads for various different things depending on what is needed. Now, here is the secret. Here is my little marketing formula that you can copy if you really want for Father's Day this year. You don't have to copy it, but it really, really works. and. If you're thinking, well, this doesn't work anymore, trust me, trust me, this still works. First, let me show you the results. This is the ad. It's really simple and straightforward. I had one goal and one goal only, and that was to get the viewer of the ad to click the link and buy my product. I didn't want to distract them from that one action. You can see the ad got 2,200 likes, 607 shares, and 377 comments. Have a look at some of these comments. A lot of wives tagging husbands. In fact, nearly every single comment is from a woman. And that's because of the targeting, which I had planned. And this is the exact targeting that I did. I layered it. I targeted women only who liked Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, James May, and Top Gear magazine. They were also married who had children. Quite a lot of layers. The biggest gamble here was I assumed that if the wife in the relationship liked Top Gear, so would the husband. Now that's quite a bold assumption, but when you think about it, Top Gear's audience is very mixed with men and with women, and it's not crazy to assume that if the wife sits there on the couch watching Top Gear, the husband is probably going to watch it as well and enjoy it. And this is just from my experience being married. It just makes sense. Now, the gamble was much easier for me to make because I knew this niche and this audience inside out. And that's why I think working from one of your passions or your hobbies or something that you really love is a great starting point. In total, I spent $2,158 on Facebook ads and I got back $15,411 in profit. Meaning for every $1 I spent, I was getting back $7. Step five, the offer. This is of course really important because we need them to go to the sales page and buy the product, right? And your offer is very, very important here. I wanted to have scarcity. I wanted to have a good price. There's so much I wanted to include here to really get a high conversion rate. So we had the scarcity of Father's Day because obviously Father's Day would come and go. So people wanted to buy their stuff so that it would arrive in time for Father's Day. On top of that, I also added a 30 day countdown. So regardless of Father's Day, people had to order stuff within the 30 days, otherwise it wouldn't be available anymore. And I was able to use the words limited edition, one time only. That kind of thing. I also made sure to have a decent price of $19.99, something that I thought was quite affordable. Now let's have a look at the key takeaways from this experience. I used a combination of my passion and a huge trend to infiltrate an audience that I knew a lot about. This made the whole process way easier. My final numbers looked like this, minus the pennies. My revenue was $24,387. My total ad spend was $2,158. And my total base cost for t-shirts, now I didn't actually lay out any money for the t-shirts because this is print on demand. So I only paid for a t-shirt out of the profits when an item sold, but we can still work out how much those items cost. 
So mm, the cost for those base plain t-shirts was $8,967, meaning my take home profit from this little experience was $15,411. That is pretty epic in my opinion, and it shows that there are so many different approaches to print on demand that actually work. The social media approach is amazing, but another approach which is really good is the advertising approach. And if you have some startup capital to throw into ads, then you should definitely consider going down that route. The speed of running an ad is just insane. It's amazing. You start an ad and you can literally get sales seconds later. It's really, really cool. Now, the, the one thing I would compare to the speed of an ad is having a viral Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube post, right? If you have a post go viral, millions of views, then obviously, well, that's probably a lot better than an ad because it's free and all of that. But you'll get that instantaneous results that you would get from an ad, providing the targeting is good, the offer is good, the design is good, and you understand that audience. I just wanna say the link to everything I've used like Canva and Placid and anything else will be down below in the description. And if print on demand seems like a solid side hustle that you wanna try, then I highly recommend checking out this video next where I show you exactly how I would start a print on demand company if I was starting from scratch. It's an epic video, you've got to check it out.